So for my set of data visualizations, the title is Women's Health, Education, and Political Empowerment in Developing and Developed Countries and Evidence-Based Policy Implications. So for my research question, I explore three indicators all related to women. Maternal mortality, women in secondary education, and women in parliament. My original purpose was to see whether there was any correlation between any of the three factors and to see whether slow progress for women's health in developing countries was due to prejudice against women or deprioritization of the needs of women. So maternal mortality was chosen as an indicator for the health of a set of vulnerable women. And I thought that this data point would show a certain trend that could serve as the basis for my research question. This particular set of box graphs shows the maternal mortality ratio of developing and developed countries in five-year intervals from 1990 to 2015. The colors were added in order to help see the different years throughout the presentation. As expected, developing countries had a lower maternal mortality, mortality rate the developing countries definitely had worse maternal mortality across the years. Still, there was less of a difference on average. There may have been a range of countries within developing countries, but the average improved over time and the progress made every five years is apparent. Another point that intrigued me was the presence of certain outliers that needed the most help. Although these definitely improved throughout the period, they certainly brought down the overall average. And this is a heat map showing the same data in a different form. As you can see, the develop, developed countries stayed at a pretty low maternal mortality ratio from the beginning, with some improvement as seen in the slightly darker hues of purple towards the end of the MDG period. However, there was drastic improvement in develop, developing countries over the 25 years. The second indicator chosen was Gender Parity Index in Secondary Level Enrollment. This indicator was meant to show the involvement of girls in education. Whereas primary education increasingly became a given, secondary education was thought to be more to, thought to more realistically depict the state of women's education on basic levels for this particular research question. The gender parity index describes a ratio, so closer to 1.0 means that when men and women are equally represented, a value larger than 1 means that women are better represented, and a value less than 1 means that men are better represented. As you can see, there is a huge range for developing countries, although the average for developing and developed countries are similar around the 1.0 mark. There are many outliers for both developing and developed countries, whether the values are lower or higher than the average. And no data was available for this particular data set for 2015, so that was not included in the data visualization. The proportion of seats held by women in national parliament was chosen because political power is considered the highest level of women's empowerment by the UN. The UN has five sets of data regarding female empowerment, uh, girls in primary school, girls in secondary school, girls in tertiary or higher education, women in non-agricultural sectors of occupation, and women in national parliament. This particular indicator was initially chosen to see whether slow progress for women was due to lack of political representation on their behalf. However, the lesson that I took away from this actually was more oriented towards developed countries. Regarding women in parliament, the range was larger on large on both sides, and overall developed countries have made much more progress than developing countries over the years. In 1990, there was a definite difference seen between developing and developed countries, although developed countries did have a huge range. However, over the years, the developing countries have pretty much caught up with the developed countries in some cases, although the overall average is slightly lower and there is a huge range. No data was available for an so that was not included in the uh, visualization. But uh, as you can see, a clear trend of sorts can be seen from the data available. Um, sorry. So um, the 
data for maternal mortality, girls in secondary education, and women in parliament was initially used to try to explain trends in developing countries. However, I found the data also useful for developed countries and how evidence-based policy thinking could become more effective. First of all, within every indicator, there were a couple of countries that were statistically outliers. These countries were the ones bringing down the world average. These countries would have to be focused on more than others in the future. Second, within the developing country category, there was a huge range. Some countries had proportion of seats in national parliament held by women that were greater to or equal to or greater than the proportion of most developed countries. Therefore, the umbrella term third world country or developing countries no longer seems to be a great method of approaching the improvement of the world. Third, developed countries have to work on their empowerment of women. Relative to the advances in health and education, women are not seeing proportionate involvement in government and politics. This societal problem is one that the developing countries are falling behind on and must focus on in the future. Although the trends seen were not expected, the data has shown tangible results that policymakers can use as guidance in making more informed decisions. Uh, next panel will talk about her time.